Good morning from Trinity Episcopal Church. Today is Friday, the 11th of September. This morning we will be doing another morning prayer, but this one is a more modern language version of morning prayer. It's also a somewhat shorter version, and it's taken from a book called Enriching Our Worship. And Enriching Our Worship was authorized by the General Convention of the Episcopal Church uh, at its meeting in Philadelphia in 1997. So this morning we will be doing morning prayer from Enriching Our Worship. We will begin with this opening sentence. God is spirit, and those who worship must worship in spirit and in truth. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have been denied your goodness in each other and in ourselves and in the world you have created. We have repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O God, let our mouth proclaim your praise and your glory all the day long. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And now let us hear the, Vin the Vinite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise to the Lord a shout with psalms. For you are a great God. You are great above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth, and the height of the hills are yours also. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For you are our God, and we are the people of your pasture and the sheep of your hand. Oh, that today we would hearken to your voice. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 67, verses 1 through 5. O oh God, be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of your countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O oh God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The first lesson this morning is written in the 15th chapter of the book of the Acts of the Apostles, beginning at the 12th verse. The whole assembly kept silent and listened to Barnabas and Paul as they told of all the signs and wonders that God had done through them among the Gentiles. After they finished speaking, James replied, My brothers, listen to me. Simeon has related how God first looked favorably on the Gentiles to take from among them a people for his name. This agrees with the words of the prophets as it is written. After this I will return and I will rebuild the dwelling of David which is fallen. From its ruins I will rebuild it and I will set it up. 
so that all the peoples may seek the Lord, even all the Gentiles over whom my name has been called. Thus says the Lord, who has been making these things known from long ago. Therefore I have reached a decision that we should not trouble those Gentiles who are turning to God, but we should write to them to abstain only from things polluted by idols and from fornication and from whatever has been strangled and from blood. For in every city, for generations past, Moses has had those who proclaim him, for he has been read aloud every Sabbath in the synagogue. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. This morning, the first reading follows with the Canticle 12, section 3 of Canticle 12. It's the Song of Creation. Glorify the Lord, all ye works of the Lord. Sing praise and give honor forever. In the high vault of heaven, glorify the Lord. Sing praise and give honor forever. Let the people of God glorify the Lord. Sing praise and give honor forever. Glorify the Lord, O priests and servants of the Lord. Sing praise and give honor forever. Glorify the Lord, O spirits of souls of the righteous. Sing praise and give honor forever. You that are holy and humble of heart, glorify the Lord. Sing praise and give honor forever. Let us glorify the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Sing praise and give honor forever. In the high vault of heaven, glorify the Lord. Sing praise and give honor forever. The second lesson this morning is written in the 11th chapter of the Gospel of John, beginning at the 30th verse. Now Jesus had yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews were, who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed and spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he open the eyes of the blind men, have kept could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, Lord already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing there. So they that, that they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to him, to them, Unbind him and let him go. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Now we will say Canticle 18, a song of the Lamb. Splendor and honor and royal powers are yours by right, O God Most High. 
for you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation a royal priesthood to serve God. And so to the one who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. And now we will say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Let us pray. Help us, O God, our Savior. Deliver us and forgive us our sins. Look upon your congregation. Give to your people the blessing of peace. Declare your glory among the nations and your wonders among all peoples. Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turn away. Never forget the lives of the poor. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you and your favor to those who are true of heart. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning, so we shall rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. This morning I would like to say a special prayer for those on the West Coast who are experiencing these devastating, these devastating fires. With loss, of, with loss of life and loss of property. May you be with them in their suffering and in their struggle and in their grief. We ask that you bring relief to the people who live there and that you grant your blessing and protection to those who are fighting these devastating fires. And also be with each of us, Heavenly Father, as we, as we deal with so many other issues that confront us. The pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, and the unrest and the injustice um, that we are finding in many places in our country. Be with all those who are suffering in body, mind, and spirit for whatever reason. We ask all of this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Well, that concludes morning prayer from uh, Enriching Our Worship. I hope that um, you found that a, a interesting and uplip, uplip, uplifting experience. Uh, it's a new way of doing uh, morning prayer. Thank you once again for being with us. I, I hope you will uh, join Mother Ann on Monday morning uh, at 8.30 uh, for another prayer and meditation. Uh, please 
be sure to remember that Brother Les Roberts and Chris Paul are with you each evening, Monday through Friday, from 8, at 8.30 p.m. Uh, for Compline. And we look forward to seeing many of you as well at our Sunday morning service, uh, which is at 10 a.m. I hope uh, that today, a uh, rainy day here in Maryland, but I hope that today finds you well. I hope that you remain and you and your families remain well and that you are safe. And I hope that you have an absolutely wonderful day and a, a loving and peaceful weekend.